Okay, so we are gonna start this conversation off today with a few things that you already know about acids and bases from our solutions unit. So first of all, we know that acids are gonna ionize to make H plus ions. They break up into an H plus ion and a, some other anion, okay? We know that bases are gonna ionize to make hydroxide ions with a negative charge. We know that strong acids and bases are strong electrolytes. That's really hard to see. Let me pop the light off real quick. Okay, so they're gonna create a very bright light if we put them into an, um, an electrolytic solution. Okay, weak acids and bases are weak electrolytes. So they create a weak light. And electrolytes are things that have ions in water. So let's get a little more specific here with this. What can we conclude from all those observations? Well, strong acids and strong bases are strong electrolytes because they make lots of ions in the solution. Weak acids and bases are weak electrolytes because they don't make very many ions. They only make a few. We already know that because that's what we learned in our electrolytes section of our solutions unit. So now let's visualize that for a minute. If we look at this picture, this is a strong acid, hydrochloric acid, nice strong acid. So if I take HCl and I dunk it into water, every single HCl molecule is going to break apart into Cl minus and H plus. That's all I have in here. I've got water and I've got chlorine ions and I've got hydrogen ions. That's it. That's all I have. Versus, okay, oh, I'm sorry. One other thing. This causes the pH number to be very far away from seven. Seven is neutral on the pH scale. So when we have all these hydrogen ions, we get really far away from neutral. Okay, so we're headed towards one here. Okay, here we have a weak acid, okay, or a weak base. We dunk this in there. Most of my acetic acid, okay, vinegar, is gonna stay acetic acid. See them? They're still here, they're still here. Still acetic acid, whoop, there it is. Only like one to 10% of it is going to actually break apart into the hydrogen ion and the acetate anion, okay? So we still get ions, just not very many. And so remembering our electrolytes, we don't have very many charged particles that are freely moving. We have charged particles here, but they're stuck together. So they aren't gonna be able to pass an electric current. This one right here is the only pair that will conduct an electric current because they're the only ones that can freely move. So this here causes our pH number to be closer to seven, closer to neutral because we don't have as many H plus ions, okay? So we're ionizing less than 100% here. Now, be very careful. Strength and concentration when we are talking about acids, when you say your coffee is strong, you mean it's concentrated. You don't mean that it's well ionized, okay? Strong acids are ones that completely ionize or almost completely ionize. Weak acids are ones that do not completely ionize. So you only have select ones that are gonna ionize. Okay, that's the difference between strong and weak. Concentrated means you have a lot of it, no matter what it is. Dilute means you don't have as much of it, it's mostly water. Concentrated means you have a lot of it. Dilute means you, don't ha you have more water than you do the ions, okay? So very careful with that. Strong and weak is talking about how well ionized it is. Concentrated versus dilute is how much of it is made of water and how much of it is made of our, our acid. All right, so we have two types of acids and bases. Actually, there's, there's three. <laughs> but there's two that we're gonna talk about, okay? We have the Arrhenius definition of an acid and a base. The Arrhenius definition says that an acid is anything that makes H plus ions when we dissolve it in water. So what makes something an acid? Well, it makes H plus ions. What makes something a base? It makes OH minus ions when dissolved in water, okay? And then here we have what's called a dissolution equation. When I stick my HCl in water, what actually happens is the hydrogen goes and kind of gets stuck to that negative um, oxygen into the water and it makes an H3O plus ion and then Cl1 minus ions, okay? When I stick some sodium hydroxide into water, I end up with sodium plus ions and OH minus ions in my water, okay? There is another definition of acids and bases that you need to know. And this is the one we're gonna really focus on today. This is a little bit more inclusive definition. By the Arrhenius definition, there are a lot of things that are not bases. 
For example, ammonia, which is a cleaning chemical that we use, um, NH3, has no hydroxide and yet it behaves like a base. So we needed a definition for acids and bases that was slightly more inclusive of other things that do behave as acids and bases do. And so we came up with what is called the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases. So according to this, an acid is a proton giver or a proton donor. So something that is able to give up a hydrogen, okay? Bases are proton acceptors. They are things that can take a, um, a hydrogen ion, okay? So this is, this is including NH3 because we know that NH3 can take on an extra hydrogen and become NH4 for the one plus charge. We call that ammonium, okay? Under the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases, we have what are called the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. In other words, after my acid has donated its proton, it becomes what's called a conjugate base. After my base has accepted my hydrogen atom, my hydrogen ion, it becomes the conjugate acid. So it's a game of who has the hydrogen. Um, whoever has the hydrogen is currently considered the acid, okay? So a strong acid is going to react to form a weak conjugate base, okay? A weak acid will react to form a strong conjugate base. A strong base will react to form a weak conjugate acid. A weak base will react to form a strong conjugate acid. So when we do this, we switch. If we started off strong, we're going weak. If we started off weak, we're going strong, okay? This is a list of the strong acids and bases. It's not an exhaustive list, but it's a pretty decent list. Hydrochloric acid, HCl, hydrobromic acid, HBr, hydroiodic, HI, chloric acid, HClO3, perchloric acid, HClO4, nitric acid, woo, strong acid, H HNO3, and then sulfuric acid, H2SO4. So these are your strong acids. When they react um, with a base, they are going to form a weak conjugate base. These are my strong bases. Any group one metal hydroxide, so sodium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, rubidium hydroxide, cesium hydroxide, those are all strong bases. And then the heavier of the group two metal hydroxides, so calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide, those are your strong bases. All right. So flip over to page 108 and go ahead and copy these reactions onto page 108 real quick. Leave some space between them. We're gonna do a little activity, figuring out which one is the acid, which one is the base, which one is the conjugate acid, and which one is the conjugate base. Okay, so here I have the exact same equations that you just wrote down, only on the left we are missing our, uh, one of our hydrogens. So for our first equation, we had HNO3, which is nitric acid, and then we had water, which is HOH, okay? And we're gonna play a little game of which hydrogen is gonna do the moving to make this over here. So we have to figure out which hydrogen to move in order to make this over here, okay? So our NO3 is going to no longer have its hydrogen, and our HOH is going to add an extra hydrogen. So that means that my nitric acid is going to give up its hydrogen to the water. Okay? So in order to make this over here, my HNO3 is giving its hydrogen to the HOH. So let's go back to those definitions. The acid is the hydrogen giver. So that's HNO3 because it's going to give its hydrogen to the water, okay? The water is actually acting as a base here because it is accepting our hydrogen, okay? Now let's figure out the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. Remember that the acid, after it loses its hydrogen, becomes the conjugate base. So once we give that hydrogen away, we end up with the NO3. So the NO3 one minus is my conjugate base. The base on the other hand is now in possession of that hydrogen, okay? We started off as HOH water, we added an extra hydrogen. So now that H3O plus is our conjugate acid, okay? So remember the acid is the one that gives the hydrogen away, the base is the one that accepts it. The conjugate base is the acid after giving away its hydrogen because it no longer has the hydrogen, so now it's the base. 
And then our conjugate acid is the one that's now holding the hydrogen. And if you think about it, that makes perfect sense. This HNO3 we know is capable of taking a hydrogen because it had one to begin with, right? So once it loses its hydrogen, it is now capable of taking hydrogen, hydrogen again. That makes it a conjugate base. Whereas this water, it was capable of accepting a hydrogen here, but now it's got an extra hydrogen that could very easily be taken away. So over here, it is now a conjugate acid. All right, let's play again with this next equation. So let's clear these cards off. Okay, so we're starting with the acid HCl and water HOH. And we have to figure out who is giving up their hydrogen in this case. Which one of these is gonna give up our hydrogen? And this is the result. We know what's going to be the product here. So it looks like we're gonna end up with chlorine by itself without its hydrogen. So that means that my HCl is going to have to give up its hydrogen to become the Cl minus, and it's going to be accepted by the water once again. So remember by our definition, the acid is the one giving away its hydrogen. So on this side, our HCl is giving up its hydrogen to the water, so that makes it the acid. Our water, on the other hand, is accepting the hydrogen, so that makes it the base. On the other side of the equation, my base, my water, turned into H3O+, which means it has an extra hydrogen that makes it the conjugate acid. My HCl lost its hydrogen, became Cl minus. It is now able to accept a hydrogen again, so it is now the conjugate base. Okay, let's play again. Let's clear off our cards. And let's look at this next equation. Okay, so this one's a little tricky. This is NH3, really, but we stole a hydrogen so that we could move it if we need to. And then we have HOH. So this is if I were to put ammonia in water, okay? And we know from our notes that ammonia behaves like a base, but let's see why. Let's see why, what's going on here? So we have NH3 and it is gonna turn into NH4. In order for NH3 to turn into NH4, this water is gonna have to give up it's hydrogen and give it to the NH3. So now this is NH234, this is NH4 now, okay, which is what we have over here. So in this case, our water is the one giving up the hydrogen. So in our previous two examples, water has been the base. In this case, it is being the acid because it is giving up its hydrogen. So now water is one of those cool things, it's neutral, it's right in the middle it can go either direction. It can either accept a hydrogen and become H3O plus, or it can lose a hydrogen and become an OH minus ion. So that means that it can either be acting as a base where it accepts the hydrogen, or it can be acting as the acid that gives away its hydrogen. Now, if my NH3 is the one that takes the hydrogen, that makes it our base. On the other side, Water gave away a hydrogen, and now it is capable of accepting a hydrogen. So that makes it the conjugate base. NH3 went up to NH4, so it now has an extra hydrogen that it could give away. So that makes it our conjugate acid. Okay, let's do one more example before I turn you loose to your assignment. So we have perchloric acid and we have H2SO4. Both of these are technically strong acids. So what happens when we mix these together? Well, our H2SO4, everybody see that? It's two hydrogens, becomes H3SO4. So it looks like our hydrogen is going from our perchloric acid to our sulfuric acid to create the H3SO4 and then the perchlorate ion by itself. So, if perchlorate is giving away its hydrogen, that makes it the acid. If sulfuric acid is accepting the hydrogen, that makes it a base. What? Yes, we can have a strong acid acting as a base if it is mixed with another strong acid. We just have to figure out which one is, which one is doing it. All right, ClO4 lost its hydrogen, so now it is capable of accepting a hydrogen again. That makes it the conjugate base. H3SO4 has an extra hydrogen that's been added, so it could give that away. 
So it is now the conjugate acid. All right. So this is largely what you're going to be doing with your assignment, um, only you won't have the cards. So you're going to be looking for where did the hydrogen go? Where did who who lost the hydrogen? Whoever loses the hydrogen is the acid. Whoever takes the hydrogen is the base. And then on the other side, remember, whoever is without their hydrogen is the conjugate base, and whoever has an extra hydrogen is the conjugate acid.